So we've seen how we can use a, a master part file that contains all the parameters needed for the entire assembly. Uh, and we've seen how we can use an Excel sheet for the same purpose. Both methods allow us to modify dimensions throughout and between part files uh, in an assembly from one handy location. In this next video, uh, we're gonna show you how from the assembly file itself, we can link down to parameters contained in the various part files and control them from the top level assembly. Um, and as you know, the, the parameters inside an assembly file are pretty much just constraint offset or angle values. Uh, but we're gonna start this by creating some additional parameters to associate with the various dimensions inside each part. Now at this stage, um, it's not just as easy as using the link button and searching for one of the IPT files to bring in its parameters. Um, if a part exists inside this assembly file and we try to link to the parameters of that part in the assembly parameter table, uh, we'll get a cyclic error. It's, it's just not gonna work. So we're gonna add some new parameters to this table. Uh, and for now, we'll just add a few uh, representing the, the various lengths of each section. Uh, and we'll give some starting values to them. And then let's add a, a thickness value as well. Uh, and because this could be made out of various gauge metal, uh, let's make this one multi-choice so the user can pick from a list of existing metal thicknesses. Okay, now at this stage, uh, these parameters are not doing anything at all other than just sitting there uh, waiting to be assigned to something. Uh, so that's where iLogic is gonna come into play. Now we have our iLogic browser showing here on the, the bottom left. Um, if you don't have it showing, you can go to the, the Manage tab uh, and turn it on here. Um, you can also add a new iLogic rule here on the ribbon um, or down on the iLogic browser with a, with a right click. Um, we'll just give the rule a name and we're now creating an iLogic rule. So all we're really wanting to do here um, is link up our parameters that we've just created at this top level assembly to the various parameters contained in the individual part files. So this tells you that you don't, you don't really need the master part file or an Excel sheet uh, to drive the various parts. Instead, you could leave all the linking to the very end um, and control everything from the assembly by using iLogic. What you'll probably find though is that you'll maybe use all the methods that we've shown in one assembly at some point and um, because all the methods have their own advantages. And since we did create a master part file uh, that contains all the driving parameters, we're going to link to that one file, um, which is easy, uh, as easy as expanding it from this list, selecting model parameters, double clicking on the parameter we're interested in, which adds its info down here, uh, typing equals, and then typing in the name of the corresponding parameter we created at this top level assembly. And that's it. Uh, we can do that for our other parameters exactly the same way. And, and that's, uh, that's all there is to it. Our rule is created. So now if we open up our parameter table for this assembly, uh, we can change the various lengths of the sections and the thickness of the metal uh, from the top level assembly file. 